Hello everybody and welcome to today's masterclass. The Career Space Masterclass series continues in cinematography and we will be looking at movement. So thanks again everyone for joining us. Uh, this is a, a four part series and uh, if you are looking to access the last parts, uh, just you can also send me an email, tom at tbmcs.ca that can provide you the links. Uh, eventually we're gonna have everything on our YouTube channel as well. So keep checking out uh, tbmcs.ca for the latest news and information and uh, also, uh, you know, on, on what uh, what's possible and what, what we're doing and so on. So um, in terms of uh, what we'll be doing today is, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at, um, uh, you know, the, the, the concept of movement and what does uh, what does camera movement entail and the types of camera movement and all sorts of that fun stuff in terms of, uh, you know, what what cinematography is about. So it's, it's going to be a really inter interesting and, and jam packed uh, session. So again, thanks for joining us. So in terms of uh, all our partners, just want to um, uh, you know let everyone know that uh, our partners on this project, we have the Canada Council for the Arts, and uh, we also have our library partners. So we have uh, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now the great thing is, is we have access to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera at these libraries. So that means you can go and take that camera out. So you know, the cinematography techniques that I'm talking about, it's great to practice them. So we have cameras available at all three libraries, and those are the Canon 6D DSLR, the photo camera, which you can do video with. So, and there's a tripod, so you can definitely take that out. Now, with Wasaga Beach Public Library and the Blue Mountains Public Library, we have the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, the 4K. You can just take a proficiency test, go to our website, tbmcs.ca, take the test. We get you access. If you have a library card at those two libraries, then you can take that camera out. So we really encourage everyone to do so. And then you can practice some of these concepts that we're talking about and discussing. And, uh, you know, it will let you practice. And practice makes perfect, as they say. So um, really encourage everyone to, to get on to those, uh, those cameras and try things out. Now, a lot of the things in movement are really interesting. Um, I have um, some video shots that we're going to... Uh, showcase and we hope to have some more um, uh, in-person sessions um, uh, soon and uh, it, on that note too uh, coming up in April we are planning an in-person uh, master class that will be in actual film production so we're going to go over a lot of these things will be incorporated in that uh, so I hope everyone uh, if you're watching please check that out if you haven't signed up for it yet uh, there's limited space, um, so we want to uh, encourage you to check that out uh, if you can. Uh, it's Wednesdays, same time like uh, right now what we're doing. So um, yeah, hope to see everyone there as well. Now, uh, you know, in terms of movement, let's get right into this. We got, like I said, a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, what is movement? We're going to look at tripod movement. I'm going to explain that. Uh, handheld movement, stabilizer movement, dolly movement, crane and jiv movement, and zoom movement. So out of this list, you'll notice that, you know, well, as we go through each one, a lot of these are the actual physical movement of a camera. And then a lot of them, uh, so the last one, the zoom movement, is actually using the lens. Now, we mainly have prime lenses in our uh, repertoire of equipment uh, access that's available. Uh, but the Canon 6D, for example, has a zoom lens. So that that camera, you could take that both cameras out, take the photo camera out, take the video camera out. You can put the zoom lens onto the video camera. Then you'd have a 24 to 105 millimeter zoom lens. And the zoom lens lets you go from wide to zooming in. We're very familiar with that as our phones do that. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, photo cameras do that. It's a very common thing uh, that a lot of times we're able to use and access. But the, the, the other thing is that, you know, can you, you know, can that be, um, implemented into uh, you know the other types of moves so we're going to look at how what, what some of those differences are and what what that can mean for the for the camera so I wanted to start with defining what is movement so I've put again this is always fun because I think this is open for discussion and it's it just kind of an idea something to, to you know let let a kind of like let's discuss you know what does this mean how does it wh how does it relate and I think this opens up some curiosity and it also opened my mind up to wait a sec there's actual that optical movement as well and focus movement so we, you know that's something we've talked about before is what is in focus what is out of focus and if you join us last week for the composition session you'd notice that that's uh, you know something that that has been um, uh, dealt with in terms of the um, 
uh, you know, working in both, uh, um, uh, you know, realms of it. So I think it's, uh, it's always a, a fun um, aspect to look at what, what do these definitions mean? Because it's always, it's always an interesting thing to, to look at that. So here's the thing, uh, the movement, I'm going to define it as the method of creating the physical or optical change of space within the shot by altering the camera's perspective. So as we talked last week in composition, we always think about, okay, what's, what's composed? What's our composition in the frame? I mean, this is always great doing these online uh, workshops because you are watching a composition. You're watching me in a frame. And I think that's, that's always interesting because that is how am I composed? Where am I sitting? What is the shot, right? But if that camera is to move, then we have a different change of perspective and that becomes the camera movement. So do we pan left or right? Do we tilt up or down? So these different terms, what, what do they mean? And that's, uh, that's always really interesting. And you know, that, that idea of movement is, you know, and changing the perspective is a very cinematic thing because you can't do that in photography generally. There's some ways to think about movement. And we've been looking at this, uh, if, if you've joined some of our other workshops with uh, Jeff Wilson, the, the animator, illustrator, uh, cartoonist, he's talked about movement. How do you draw movement? And that's always interesting. It's a challenge because you have a fixed frame in a drawing or a cartoon and you're trying to create movement. And in animation, again, you're moving, you have moving frames, you can create that movement. So that's not a problem. So, you know, that, that's always the, the interesting thing of how does that, how does that work? Um, now, the other thing is, you know, by adjusting uh, movement and changing perspectives, we're changing the story, we're deciding what to show and how to show it. So we can change perspectives, we can reveal things, we can focus on things. And, and I think that's always a really interesting idea of, uh, you know, being able to do that in, in both ways. Um, okay, so that's the idea. So altering the camera's perspective. I think that's a, a really uh, important thing to, to think about here is, you know, if we're altering the camera's perspective, what does that mean? How does that work? Uh, so that's, that's a, a really neat thing. But before we get into like all the different types and, and we're gonna demonstrate that and look at that, is I wanted to look at some of the shot sizes again. Because as we alter perspectives, we should also think about, you know, what are, going back to kind of composition and the shot sizes, what do these mean and how do they change perspective? So in this case, these shot sizes, this is what you could achieve in a zoom. So you can, you can create all nine of these shots in the zoom lens. So we can start wide and we can zoom all the way in to something. Maybe not as an extreme close up as this person's eye, but the idea is that you can change all these different shots. So what if we could do that and how would that work? So, you know, and that's, that's good. So we can look at, you know, what does it mean um, and, and, and how will that work? So if we go from the extreme long shot, that first one top left, that's the really wide shot, establishing shots they're called, but extreme long shot. Then we can go into like this very long shot or long shot. Um, and, you know, again, you see a little bit more perspective of the bridge. Then we get into the long shot, which is the whole subject. So that means they're usually head to toes or you see the entire subject. So let's say it's a car, a long shot would be seeing the entire car, right? So that's the idea. You can see these other, the first two, they're more about showing the environment or establishing the environment where we are, right? So again, look at, this is changing perspective though. If we start to zoom in, this is a form of movement. And that's why we have to look at this, it not being just the physical camera moving, but also the shots moving can create the sense of movement. By capturing these different shots, we can create the essence of movement by moving in closer to areas. Okay, so that's a long shot. Then we get into the medium long shot, uh, which is interesting. And that is usually knees higher of, of the subject. So, you know, medium long shot, let's say again, like a car, that would be, you know, maybe not seeing the wheel, the tires anymore. Uh, a mid shot is kind of waist up. So again, that would be more of like, you know, the, the windshield up of a car, just to give an idea, because it's not always about people. I know we're sometimes filming other things. Medium close up, you know, kind of chest, head, that whole idea. That's a very standard classic shot for dialogue, interviews. We see that shot a lot, that medium close up. That's like a real go-to. Uh, it works for on so many levels and, you know, we get 
we get uh, you to using that a lot, I think, in both narrative and documentary filmmaking. So that medium close-up, which is really interesting. Uh, then the close-up, which is again a, another. So between the, that one and that one, those the close-up is another very standard thing. We see that a lot. Whole head, um, and you might frame a little bit tight, so you kind of you know real real right in there, the whole head, the whole face. Uh, then a, more of a, a big close-up, they're calling it in this one, or you know you start to get into extreme close-up, but really getting into you know the specific of the eyes. So again, how does this look like in a car? We'd be looking at perhaps you know um, the rims on a tire or the headlights. That kind of thing would be a close up. Then extreme close up, like look at just go looking at someone's eye, right? That real extreme close up could be a mouth, an eye, hand. Sometimes you know like moving things. And we looked at this last week again in composition. But I thought this chart really shows how we can move, create movement by moving the shots closer. So this can be by moving the camera, just moving it closer physically. You know, you can be using the same lens all the way through this. We're just walking towards the subject. So that could be getting different shots and that's creating this style of movement. So that's a physical, but it's also can be an optical if I start to use a zoom as well, right? So we can zoom in, we can walk towards the person and get different shots. So the idea of movement doesn't just have to be creating movement that is, um, you know, the idea of actual ca the cameras moving, but we can be creating movement through the idea of um, you know, moving optically or changing the shot sizes. And I think that's always a, a really interesting idea that we could be doing it that way as well, right? And what, what does that mean, right? So that's, that's always a, a really interesting um, uh, method and idea. Uh, so that's, that's something to think about. So let's, let's really uh, you know, keep that uh, in, in, in mind there in terms of what, what are we doing, how are we doing it, and how it can be used in different aspects. And, uh, and that's always a, a really interesting idea. Is it just physically moving or are we actually doing uh, more, than, more than that, right? Like what are the different aspects? What are the different options to us in terms of you know, what we want to do and, and how we want to do that um, in, in the shots? Okay, so let's move along here. So shot sizes and lens, uh, focal length, a little bit of this, um, you know, shot sizes can be created with one lens or focal length. So, you know, that could be by moving the camera uh, closer or farther away, just like I was mentioning. But different focal lengths, you can essentially, it's like a telescope. So you're moving from wider lenses and you're going in closer. So, you know, the 60 millimeter focal length is really that wide angle lens. So that would, same thing like on your smartphone, there is the wider angle lenses. Now we see smartphones with, you know, three lenses. Uh, we see things like, uh, I have, I have one like this, so this is like the 11 uh, Pro Max. And you see there's three different lenses, right? So that gives you, there's like a wide, there's a telephoto, you know, that, that kind of idea I think is really interesting in terms of, you know, the different lenses and how they can behave and, and react. Um, and that's, that's uh, definitely quite interesting in, in terms of the, the lens focal length. So that's the same idea, 60 millimeter wide, 35 millimeter is generally referred to as human eyesight. So it's very similar to that. Uh, 50 millimeter is a medium length. That's really that portrait lens that we'll hear about. Photographers often call it a portrait lens. 85 millimeter becomes a telephoto lens, so it's more like a tele, uh, a telescope, where you're getting really close up some, from further away. So, the use of different lenses can create the essence, <coughs> the essence of movement as well. So that's always really, you know, that's always something of, to keep in mind, like that movement, that idea of movement, and what does it mean, how does it work, um, and, uh, you know, using those different lenses to do things. Okay, so prime versus zoom lens. So the prime lens is actually just, you know, like a fixed prime lens. So, you know, this is like a prime lens. This is a big, wide uh, 6.5 millimeter lens. That's it, it's just a prime lens. The zoom lens will be bigger, and it moves from, like I said, the Canon 6D we have in our, uh, public access for equipment with their libraries. That's a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. It's a zoom lens. So that goes from wide to uh, the telephoto, the 105 millimeter. In our digital cinematography kits, we have what's equal to like a 16, 35, 50, and 85. We have that four set uh, lens idea. So the wide, the normal, the medium, and the close up. So those four lenses are the same idea of creating movement. So we should always think of that as well. 
So zooms, we commonly use more in like documentary films, news, sports, live event production, while prime lenses are more commonly used for narrative films and dramatic television because you're not usually zooming a lot, we're creating fixed shots, moving, changing lenses, things like that. But a documentary film or something that's happening live, you don't have the opportunity to always change your lenses. So you want one lens that you can just move up and down and, and adjust accordingly, however you, know, however you want to. Um, so that's, that's always uh, you know, interesting in terms of what, what we can do with that and, and how that can work because that way you don't have to keep changing the lenses because otherwise you have to swap the lens, put another lens on. But if something's happening live, you wanna have that zoom so you can like change your shot sizes and accordingly and, and work with uh, different perspectives that way. Okay, so shot angles. We can start having different angles um, and you know, how does that work? And that's part of this movement idea too. So I, I thought, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, just the camera's moving physically. But I'm like, I think this is, there's a lot to do with the different shots and the angles also imply a movement. And that's more of a movement that the audience experiences, not necessarily that you see in camera, but it's by cutting to different angles. Um, so we got to think about how different shots will be used to tell the story, different angles, where do we want to be in that action as it unfolds as cinematographers to capture that action in, that, uh, you know, in the best possible way. So here's one big underlying question. Will this shot cut with the previous shot? And this is where the shot angles come into play and changing shot sizes. So by changing the shot size from let's say, you know, this kind of a, this medium shot to let's say a close up, right? That can cut because we're changing the shot sizes. Then there's usually a rule of about, you know, 20, 30 degrees if you can change that angle. Ideally even more, more like 45 degrees. So if you're changing the angle from let's say here to like over here, that will help uh, create that shot angle difference that really helps it move along. And it also helps it, uh, be aesthetically pleasing in terms of the changing the angle and the shot size. But by changing the angle, the degrees of the angle or the shot size, we're getting the idea of movement. So we're moving the audience around to different areas of the action. So will it cut together? A basic way to use two shots in editing to have a wide shot and then cut into a closer shot. So that's referred to as a punch in, since you literally punch into the wide frame with a longer focal length. Another way is to use different camera angles with the same lens. So the general rule, and here I'm saying about 45 degrees of movement. So, you know, if you move to the left or right, and then you can be also getting closer or further away. So you're slightly changing the shot size, changing the angle, and then it cuts really well. And that is always important to think about how will this work in editing? Because we can just shoot and say, great, we love how it all works and it looks great, but will it actually work in the editing? If, it, if we make all these shots and we finish filming a film, then, you know, if it can't work in editing, then it's kind of a lost cause if we have to, you know, put dissolves or something, you know, if we can't cut between the shots and that could really be a problem. So we want to always think about editing. Um, and I really encourage you if, if you're, you know, a director or a cinematographer, or you're studying these paths to also try out the editing of your uh, shots. Cause that's the best way to really learn about your cinematography is to understand how it will put, get put together in the editing. So I think it's really crucial for everyone to, to try both aspects and it really helps to, to understand that a lot better. Okay, so here's a 180 degree rule. And I think this is important for movement as well. And I call it the hockey game rule. Because if you think about it, if you put an imaginary line uh, across, so an axis, so it's really simple if you have, let's say two people against a wall, you can only move your camera around both sides of the people because there's like a wall, right? So an imaginary wall, you wanna have that line and then you can put the camera on any side of that 180 degrees without crossing to the other side. And what's important there is to not cross to the other side because if you cross the other side, everything's reversed. And then we're confused as to where everyone's looking, different eye lines, the action and so on. The reason it's the hockey game uh, rule is that if you, um, if you show one angle and you flip around, it will look like the puck's going the other way. So I'm gonna, let me just see if I can demonstrate this here. Let's go right into here. Okay, so here, I just have a blank screen here. So let's say this is our uh, 180 degree rule. So we put like some nice lines like right here. Yeah, I'm just gonna put another layer here. Okay, and that's our 180 degree rule. Okay, so we say it's 180 degrees like that, right? Now, if we put different cameras on different sides, you know, what, what does that actually mean? 
um, and and you know how will that actually work in terms of you know what it's what it's doing and, and how it, how it can um, how it can work out. So if if let's say in a hockey game, so think of this as the ice uh, in that area. So if we have the net, let's say here, and we have the net over here, this is the same idea. They're only putting the cameras on the one side here. So I can put a camera here. I can put a camera here, here. I can be behind the net, you know, behind each net. But I'm going to stay all around this side here. So I'm staying around this side. So this way, if this, if the camera's going, if the puck's going down this way, I can see this camera and it's following it as it goes. So there's our little puck and it's going across this way. So, you know, we see it going from left to right. If I put a camera on this side and I'm watching this camera, this puck, right? So the perspective of this camera is I'm seeing the puck. It's going this way. Now the perspective of this camera up here is I'm seeing the puck and it's going this way. So by breaking that 180 degree rule, uh, I am confusing the audience. The puck is no longer staying continuously going from left to right, but we're now going from right to left. Now, if you ever have been to a hockey game, you know, whether it's a small or, or large, like NHL, uh, you know, large arenas, you'll notice that if cameras are set up, they're just on one side of the arena. They won't be on the other side. Now, sometimes there's exceptions because you can go to different angles or close-ups because we can understand that. But generally for covering the action on the ice, all the cameras are on this 180 degree rule. So this is something we have to keep in mind with movement. But the big exception here is that if I start to do uh, movements around this line, if I start, let's say the camera's here, and I do some sort of a dolly or steady cam move and I go around, because I'm taking the audience with me, and let's say here's our, like you know two actors, I'm going around, I'm not confused spatially. So that movement is allowable because I'm no longer confused spatially in terms of how that works or what it's doing. So that's really good to know. And that you know can work and help. And, and again, it's not going to confuse in that 180 degree rule. It's not going to be confusing because I'm moving around as it goes. And it's definitely not a problem to deal with uh, because we can move around with the camera and it's not confusing for the audience and that's perfect right so that's how camera movement physically can really help alleviate that problem right so now let's look at one more thing here is the shot reverse shot so this is another technique and it's with the 180 degree rule and it's called the shot reverse shot so this is capturing one person or actor from one angle and then reversing the shot so it's a total mirror image or identical pivot that's 180 degrees and that creates that movement of the other shot, so the reverse shot. And that's really, you know, again, a really interesting, um, you know, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of what it's going to look like, uh, you know, so that 180 degree, you know, flipping from one side to the other side. So that's that can work really well, right? So that's that's always a, a really interesting perspective in terms of, you know, getting that to flip around and, and work well. Right, so that's uh, over the shoulder shots, they're called, because you're literally over the shoulder of the other actor. So that is the shot reverse shot, and that's, that's a really interesting you know, shot reverse shot idea, and uh, that helps uh, you know, manage the, the, the expectations of moving around, but also keeping the physical environment identified and uh, making sure that it's, uh, it's relevant and, and works for everyone um, in that perspective. Right, so that's, that's uh, always a really good thing. Okay. So, uh, let's, so again, that, see, you can see like, so, you know, the camera would be like here, seeing this person, and then you move around here, and you put the camera here, and you get this perspective, right? So that's kind of a shot, reverse shot idea uh, in terms of how that will work. Okay, so let's move over to, um, I have a film here that I just wanted to show. This is a clip from a film. Uh, this is called The Jazz Man. And um, this has a bit of some camera movements that I want to just identify. And I'll kind of talk through it um, as, as we go. So I'm going to just play it without the... We're just going to look at the image. I don't need to have the, the audio for it. But here it is. So 
So this is a dolly shot from another hallway. And you can see how we're moving from the left to right following the actor. This is on a dolly with tracks. So we're moving left to right. So I think that's, you know, that's a really interesting kind of very cinematic look again. So this could be a dolly shot. This could also be on some sort of a stabilizer. You can see that it's not handheld because it's smooth. Um, and there's a bit of slow motion being enabled here as well. So higher frame rate. So and this is another dolly shot going from left to right. And you can see, you know, changing focus from one student to the other student, for, from background to foreground. So we're doing that kind of a movement idea. And then we keep going to, you know, to reveal kind of our, our main character here in the back there, going through the test. And now you can see we've cut and we're over the shoulder seeing the shot and that's the sequence. So you can see, and then we cut back, right? So changing angles and, you know, moving along. So that's kind of our, you know, two dolly shots. Now here, this is just, you know, uh, here's a, a kind of a shot, the car goes by and here's where the person's moving, right? So that's always interesting. Like what is movement versus, you know, non-movement. Non so, and here you can see, we're just dealing with tripod movement left, right, reframing, composition, looking at composition. Here's our shot reverse shot. So over the two angles of the actors, shot reverse shot. And we get to see that exchange, right? From one to the other. And that's how we can achieve the shot reverse shot structure. So that looks quite, uh, you know, and it works well. This is the whole dialogue sequence. And that's giving us movement through the concept of, um, you know, this, this changing the, the shot over shot idea. Okay, character moves out. We don't have to always move, and you can see that we're able to keep the camera stationary. Here's a, a tilt up. So that's tilting up to reveal the sign. So that's a movement up. So that's our pan and tilt up. Here we have again, a, a, you know, a little bit of some, you know, here's like a pan across. We're going through, we're revealing this to actors. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a dolly move here again. So we're just revealing where we are, changing angles, that whole idea, right? So left to right movements, and just, you know, here's a little bit of panning. Right? And we can, you know, continue like that. So that's just some ideas of, you know, what's, what's kind of possible in terms of, you know, the, the types of shots and what we can do with the, the dolly moves, right? So dolly moves are really, you know, we can move the whole camera physically. We're putting it on tracks, we're moving, moving it left to right, right? That's our dolly movement. And then we also have things like the pan and tilt. So what is a pan? So a pan is moving the camera left to right. Right? So we're moving it on the actual tripod. A tilt is moving the camera up or down. And that's it. That's our, our, our tripod movements. Then the dolly is moving the camera left to right. But we can also have that tripod movement on the dolly. So we could be moving left to right physically with the camera. And we can also be panning and tilting. So that's often referred to as three axis movement where we can be moving left to right, we can be moving on the z-axis going pan and tilt, and uh, you know, we can also be dollying towards something. So that's always interesting too. So that's some of our main types of movement, is the dolly move, the tripod movement, so pan, tilt. So again, pan moving left to right, or right to left, tilt going uh, up, or from up to down, so from like stationary, so we can be going from down to up, or up to down, and then the dolly move is moving, you know, the whole left to right, plus you can incorporate pans and tilts. And that's where you get into that really cool thing, which is that three axis uh, movement idea. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull up another uh, uh, film here. Um, and uh, so this is a documentary film. And uh, uh, just wanna look at the, some of the, there's some, some camera movements here. So, you know, here's just, uh, I'm gonna kind of go through this a little bit and uh, we'll be able to see a few things. Um, so here's a, a tilt up, really simple, you know, just tilting up. And here's just a pan. So this is not dolly movements at all. This is just 
panning across, revealing things, and, and we're able to do that uh, kind of action. Okay, so here again, a tilt up, really, you know, not complicated, but you just want to have it smooth, and it's a great way to achieve movements, and it's not complicated, and I think that's, that's always really interesting in my opinion, because it isn't complicated, and, and you can create some amazing imagery. So here we go, kind of a tilt down, and, I'm, and we're changing focus a bit too. So we can, you know, kind of adjust the focus and, and get into that. Okay, so here again, here's, here's this. Uh, I think that we're going to get into some, here's, here's a bit of like a, an aerial idea. So that's another type of move, aerial above these apple orchards. And, you know, this is that very similar to, um, you know, moving the camera as a dolly, right? So it's the, the drone. Uh, or the UAV is flying over and it's stabilized and it's allowing us to maintain a stability and create those action moves. So we can be moving over things, moving across things, moving up or down. Uh, so again, really interesting uh, ideas in terms of what we can what we can do. Uh, I'm just going to move move along here a little bit. Uh, so again, th these kind of things we can be. This is again just a. Uh, um, let me just get back here. There's, there's this nice little uh, aerial shot coming up here. So that's going to see like just left to right. Very typical to what a dolly will do. So that same idea, we can incorporate the, uh, the use of a drone to create these kinds of dolly moves. And I think that's, again, very interesting. Um, and that can work. That can work quite well. And, you know, these kinds of moves where we're just changing focus, I think that's another really important type of movement where we can, you know, just change focus from foreground to background. So we're making the audience's eye move. So if you're focused on the front and you're focused on the back, that's actually taking us through a shot. And that's something very cinematic again, where we're not necessarily physically moving the camera, but we're changing that perspective based on focus. And we talked about focus last week, but I think that's a, a great, uh, you know, kind of visual representation of what we can do. Um, so again, what does that, what does that mean? What does it look like? I'm just going to go through here a little bit. Again, so here's that aerial perspective, floating over. Here's just a little pan of of the moon, following a helicopter left to right. You know, just pans. These are just pans following with a tripod. Nothing fancy but the shot works really well and it, it's really I think that's the key is we don't always have to make things really overly complicated it's that combination of composition and movement that together can really give us that feeling so again look at that uh, this is a pull a follow focus here now this is a crane shot so we're craning up this is a, a tilt down and focusing to flowers this is just a pan and here we have a bit of a stabilizer shot where we're going across. Here's a focus pull. And here's an extreme close up pulling focus to see the flowers, the apple right there. So again, really, really neat shots uh, in terms of the different amounts of movement. And this was, again, that was the, the objective here of the visuals is that we're going to keep this camera moving and having movement and taking us through the adventure of seeing an apple orchard you know, alive and, and the, the, the seasons or the stages and the months of how the, the fruit grows. So a crane movement now. So we've seen the aerial movement, tripod movement, dolly movements, the crane movement. It's physically taking the, the camera. Uh, and I'm just going to draw a little uh, diagram here. Uh, go back to this mode here. Um, so the crane, we're actually taking. So if we're so if we're on the tripod. And then what we're doing is we can take a crane like so there's going to be weights on the back here and we attach a camera right here. And this is how the crane works, right? So we have this, so this is the ground, right? And now what the crane lets us do is we can go up or down. Plus we have the spinning motion of the tripod. Right, so 
that's that multiple axis thing where we can go up, down, spinning. And if we have a stabilizer up here, we can further move the camera with the stabilizer. So if this was like a stabilizer. So that's a really interesting thing where you have multiple access points and movements requires at least two people to operate something all of this magnitude, but we could just go back to just the crane on its own going up, down and the tripod move. So we can just have this part and this part and that you can do with one person and you're basically just moving around. And that's, you know, basically, you know, a shot, let's say like this, we're just, you know, going up. That's totally doable just with one person. We're just, we're just basically moving the crane up. But you can see we're changing the perspective. We're going from the bottom to the top. And again, very cinematic, a very distinct type of movement that is, uh, you know, unique to, uh, uh, to, to cinema and cinematic uh, um, production. So uh, again, very, very, an interesting uh, 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 piece. Okay, so let me just find, uh, I'm just going to get to another shot here. And here's another sequence here. So let's just go to this part here. So again, here, look at this big, uh, these are just, you know, crane shots up. And not big, like this is, a, I think, an eight foot crane, extreme close up here of the, the bees, right? So this kind of movement, just following them, but following them with focus. You know, and, and this kind of, I look at this, just a, just a tilt uh, up and not having movement. And I think here's again, a tilt up, changing focus to show the flower. And, you know, the, really an interesting perspective changes in terms of what's, what, what we can do with, with the different scenes and shots. Um, so again, and I think that's also a key is that, you know, sometimes you might not have movement. So here's the, the you know, a big crane up again. And we'll, we'll pause it there. So, you know, you don't always have to have movement. And that's the key too, is the focus can be to the movement. There can be physical camera movement, but sometimes we just want to hold on a shot. So just as much as we're studying movement today, we should also study the ability to decide not to move and say that, you know, we're happy with, with where it is and, um, uh, you know, and, and, and how that can work and, and where that works. Uh, so that can, that can be really effective too in deciding things. So yeah, these are just, you know, just tilts down on a tripod. These are just, again, tripod moves, focus changing, right? So this isn't uh, necessarily extremely complex, uh, but, it, you know, again, it gives us these perspective changes that we can, uh, you know, work with. Uh, I'm just going to move along here a little bit to September. These are stabilizer shots, and this is just moving around, and it's with a stabilizer. And this is basically, you know, taking the stabilizer and walking with it. And the stabilization is that it has a, a, a there's like a gyro, like a stabilizer, and it and it, uh, the gimbal like makes it, um, uh, the motors that keep it balanced and even. So as you're walking, those bumps and changes and bruises of, as you're going through with the camera move, they're balanced and leveled out so that they're not uh, being getting really bumpy or making a big, um, visual reference to it, right? So we're able to walk around. So that this is the whole idea of the stabilizer. I'm just holding it, I'm walking around, and I'm changing the perspective by moving the camera. The stabilizer has really advanced that, you know, it's like the steady cam, but now there's this motorized stabilizer. They're very small. You put uh, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera on it and walk around with it. And that's really revolutionized what's possible in terms of, you know, filmmaking and being able to move around what used to be really big dolly moves we can do with the stabilizer. So, you know, it changes what's possible. And I think it's, uh, that's always really interesting. Like what is possible? How can we do it? Um, and and uh, what does that mean, right? So that's uh, uh, really uh, of interest. Okay, so I'm just gonna go uh, forward here a little bit. So let's, again, back to this kind of crane mode. Um, I think I have some, uh, there were some larger crane moves here at a certain point. Yeah, I just want to find them. I think they're going to be coming up right here. Okay, so here 
is like, a, this is a big crane. This is a stabilizer move here, stabilizer move. This is a crane that's a 20 foot crane. So it's floating right, right above. And this is the movement up of the crane. That kind of whole idea again. So it really lets you float and get, get above and, and, and around. Now I should note why that's really important is the crane is can be close to the people, the actual agricultural workers and farmers to uh, you know, be safe. So I'm not flying a drone as a cinematographer. I'm using this crane to get, I can be right next to people and it's safe. There's no danger of uh, you know, this falling on people or doing something uh, damaging to the situation. So that's, that's always really good to know. And that's why we sometimes we'll use a crane over a drone. So it always makes sure you're following all the, you know, kind of safety protocols of what's, what's required. Um, and here's kind of a, a big kind of some final crane work here. Uh, stabilizer moving in. Um, and here's the big crane shot kind of going up. And it's going to take us all the way up and over the apple trees. And this is where that really tall crane can work. And this could, again, could be a drone shot, but, you know, for safety, because there's workers and everything. And, you know, there's our big kind of top shot in that manner. So look how we're able to go from all, from the ground to that high. And that's really the cool movement of what, uh, you know, what cinema can do in terms of uh, being able to change those perspectives and being able to use this kind of, a, this crane movement to go up and down. Um, so that's, that's really the exciting part of using you know, the crane movement and, uh, and being able to move up or down in, in cinematography. So I hope that was, you know, insightful in terms of going through some of the aspects of what's, uh, what's possible, you know, how it can work. Um, you know, and I think there's, there's some great uh, ideas too, where you can, you know, you can do these kind of moves and follow people, be behind people. And the stabilizer lets you just stay on things. You can be pretty, um, you know, close, um, and see we can like move around and i think these kinds of shots are always really interesting kind of just changing the angles getting us into the action spinning around falling around i can move closer and you can see it's pretty stable and that's the great thing and then i can go left to right reveal these kinds of camera moves are, are always uh, an interesting uh, idea um, And it's going to go here. So these, these, uh, you know, again, this is just a pan. Here's a follow shot, the stabilizer. Again, very an interesting kind of shot. This is me just moving my arms to create this look of a bit of a crane shot, right? So all these kinds of shots can be really dynamic, right, and unique to cinematography and cinema. So there's that cinematic language. So let's just go over the concepts again. So we have our tripod movement. So we have our pan tilt. Then we have our dolly movement where it's physically moving the camera left to right uh, on, a, on a dolly mechanism. Then we have steady cam or stabilizing movements where we're physically carrying the camera around that's very similar to a dolly move. Then we have our crane moves where we can go up down physically with the camera and we can also move it left to right. And that's where we really start to change perspectives because we're, if we're panning and tilting on a tripod we're in a locked perspective. The dolly and the crane they start to let us move the camera physically and we're really changing the perspectives as a result in that situation. And then we also have the ability to use drone shots. So we can use those aerial shots where we can be right up above and that's another type of movement. The other last thing is just moving the camera with the tripod in different shots, those kinds of movements and the combination of focus movements. And most importantly, the changing of shot sizes really lets us move into the action. So that's really the idea of movement. Sometimes I, I don't want to define it as just being the physical movement or moving left to right, the pans and tilts, but also being able to move into action and seeing how that can work and what that means to the, to the actual, uh, you know, the story and, and uh, what's, what's required and, and what we want to tell. I think that's always important is, you know, what do we want to tell in this, in this kind of, uh, in the story of, of uh, cinematography, in the story of the film? And what, what does the film need to, uh, to tell us? So again, just, uh, you know, let's, let's remember that idea of the uh, 180 degree rule. Um, I think that's, that's always important. You know, like, you know, where does the camera stay? Staying on that one angle. 
or the one side, the imaginary line, that really helps us guide the movements. And like we've talked about is that, you know, we can technically move right, or, right around if we're moving the camera. So that, that's where camera movements on a stabilizer, we no longer have to worry as much about the 180 degree rule because we're, we're taking the audience on that trip with the camera. Uh, so that's always a, an interesting thing too. As you saw, like with that crane shot from the Apple going above, I'm changing probably the 180 degree line there at some point. Um, but we know where we are because we're moving around, right? So that works really well. So that's, uh, that's perfect. Okay, so again, thanks for joining us. I uh, just want to thank all our sponsors, uh, partners, uh, Canon Council for the Arts. And then we have our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, and the Wasaga Beach Public Library. Uh, thanks again, and I'll see you guys uh, join us next Wednesday for the next session. All the best.